you today about something that I find incredibly amazing. To start it off, I'm going to acknowledge right now that there are a lot of different names for what is probably the same thing. It's whatever you call it, whatever you're comfortable with. So what I'm going to talk about today, I call spirit guides. Others could call it guardian angels or even the goddess, but I call it spirit guide. Spirit guides are something that I've learned about through Psychic Teachers podcast, which I've referenced a zillion times. And there's a lot of opinions out there, but the ones that Samantha and Deb talk about are the ones that resonate with me and that seem to hold some serious truth for me and I have evidence to prove it in my own world. According to what I've learned through Samantha and Deb, we have various spirit guides in our lives. Again, guardian angels. But your spirit guides, some of them are temporary, but you have at least one who is the one who's with you from the day you take your first breath until the day you take your last breath. And that one is your, your main spirit guide who is beside you at all times. Now, this is the good part. They said, if you want to get to know your spirit guide, they will work with you or he or she will work with you. For instance, when you find that you are ready to meet them, I'm just going to say them instead of him or her. When you're ready to meet them, you talk to them. I find talking out loud has more effect than just talking in my mind, although they say, and I think it's true, you can think it in your mind. But when I say it out loud, I feel like that's almost like a formal invitation. It's like, look, I'm acknowledging you right now. And I'm talking to you right now. I know you're here. And what you can do with your spirit guide is come up with a symbol or a sign. My symbol for my spirit guide is a feather. Samantha and Deb have so many stories of people who have done the same thing. They'll say a purple flower in the middle of winter and they'll give it a week. I want to see a purple flower. I want to see a purple flower. And they always do. These people who write in and who tell their story, they always do. And it sounds like a lot of hoo-ha, but <laughs> I'm going to swear on my life that I believe in this and that I've seen it for myself. And I've seen it as recently as three days ago, which is pretty remarkable because it's been a long time since I've talked to my spirit guide or since I've been in touch. I've been very out of touch lately. Um, I can talk more about that later, but my symbol is a feather. And my favorite is black with polka dots, but any feather, any feather. And the reason I like a feather, and I, my spirit guide knows I want the real deal. Seeing it on a t-shirt, seeing it in a book, that counts. But sometimes I, I want the real thing because I want to keep it. I want to collect it. And I'm going to show you right here. Um, these are a few of my feathers that I've collected. All of these I've found. Some of these I've found the day after asking. Um, last summer, I was thrilled because I found a few on a walk and they won't show up in the light here, but there's a blue, you can tell. It's a little blue stripe. I'm sure it's from a blue jay, but uh, I lost my shirt over that one. I was like, thank you. That one's the bomb diggity. I got a few like that. I have another whole jar up in a cabinet over here that are smaller ones. But then I decided to start keeping it here in my very cool little star holder. I want to read to you something I wrote back in May in a little journal. A little. I mean, it's one of my many fat journals I get. This is from 
May 31st. Sunday, May 31st. And I'll skip some of it. But then I said I picked up this book today to share something exciting evidence that my guide is near and Dwayne perhaps may also be. And if you watch my empathy, are you an empath video, then you know who Dwayne is and that he's a beloved person in my world who died in January of last year. It was a year ago, um, last week. And here's what I wrote. Thursday I whispered a prayer aloud as I walked up the ramp to my trailer classroom. Please, please show me a sign that you are here. I so need to feel your presence. Perhaps I leave it too open and I ought to give you a time frame in which to give me a sign. Therefore, to my spirit guide, please show me a feather. My sign for you. An image is fine, but you know how I crave finding a feather in my path. I treasure every feather I find and I keep it for tangible evidence. Therefore, if you could please, please show me a feather during the next three days, I will treasure it. And then I thought to myself how Samantha and Deb, my favorite psychic teachers, asked their guides to show them signs as answers to questions or as evidence of a step they should take. So I asked, if my health, which I know I have neglected so long, far too long, should be addressed sooner than later, please place a feather in my path and I will understand that I must make those doctor's appointments. I will not doubt, I will not ignore, I will accept your sign as truth. And I said all these words out loud, like I whispered them out loud. A second part of this quick plea or request for spiritual communication was a prayer to my beloved Duane, whom I still miss so much and for whom I have wept several times over the past four months that he has been gone from this plane. To him I said, Duane, I have heard that some of us are together are tethered together in love, and that if I but call your name, your spirit might snap back to my side and that you will hear you will hear me. So I call on you, sweet friend, Dwayne. I love you and I so miss you in your presence in my life. Dwayne, if you are indeed here right now, here is my sign for you. The rose quartz, the gently beautiful loving stone in is my sign that you are still here. Yes, I know it is a common one, but even so, it is our stone, because he gave me a rose quartz worry stone. <sighs> the last time I saw him. Whenever I see a rose quartz or hear someone say the words, I will know you are here and you are okay and happy. Dwayne, I choose to have the rose quartz be a sign of your love, friendship, wisdom, and guidance. Be here with me when you can and please let me know that you're happy. These two prayers were on Thursday morning. On Friday morning I was making copies in the office at school when in walks one of the most loving souls in our school, Susie. Around her neck was a breathtaking strand of at least seven large rose quartz points. I must have gasped when I saw her walk in, so lovely and smiling, a giant warm smile. I remarked how much I loved her beautiful necklace, and I reached out and touched one of the stones, not telling her why my reaction was so animated. I have not told anyone about the whole miraculous event until this moment. I do feel compelled to give her a little card to tell her how much I appreciate her beautiful, loving energy, though. I'm so thankful for people like her, rare, pure, gentle souls. And oh my goodness, how spectacular was Dwayne's sign for me. My goodness, he went above and beyond the simple request. Thank you so much, Dwayne. On Saturday, I was on my deck again, that's my sacred space, sweeping leaves and pollen so that it will be usable for me to conduct ritual prayers and meditations when the opportunities arise. And what did my wandering, distracted mind and eyes discover? Of course, you can guess, not just one, but two tiny feathers just lying there waiting for my discovery. Not only were there feathers, which is glorious enough, but they were my favorite kind, spotted black and white feathers that I believe belong to woodpecker, though I'm unsure. My guide came through beautifully, and tomorrow I promise to call and make doctor's appointments. Two feathers probably means two doctors. When I sign off in a moment, I will get the numbers ready to go, along with my the possible dates. It's bad timing, of course. Life is very full right now with my family coming up from Tennessee, my oldest graduation, and 
Poochie's birthday, only two weeks away, but my guides have, my guide has spoken, and I will listen. Thank you, guide. Thank you, Dwayne. My heart is so full of joy, love, and gratitude. Blessed be. And I glued in the feathers. All right, why am I bringing this up now? I don't know. Basically because I've been so incredibly out of touch with all this for a while. I haven't spoken to my guide. I haven't thought about my guide. I felt very, very disconnected lately from my guide. It's been so long since I've spoken to him or her. And uh, I haven't seen any feathers. I mean, it's freaking end of January in the middle of winter with a billion inches of snow outside. So, no shock, right? So two days ago, I went to sleep and I decided I would uh, reconnect with my guide. And I said, it's been so long. I whispered out loud as I lay in bed about to go to sleep and I cried when I was talking because I feel sad that I haven't been in touch and how much I miss my guide. And I said, are you still there? I haven't felt you in so long and it's been forever. And if you are there, I know it's a tall order right now in January, but please show me a feather. And I don't mean a picture because I won't notice it if it's a picture. I'm too absent-minded. Please put a feather in my back, please. I walked outside the next morning and on the front porch. It's a little battered and beat up. But this was on my porch. <laughs> and I'm sure my guide was like, look, dude, it's freaking January after a blizzard. It's the best I could do. Enjoy your ratty ass feather. And I do. I love my ratty ass feather. And I'm going to glue it into my book right over here. And I, in my response in my journal, I am equal parts shocked and completely accepting. Isn't, it, isn't that an odd sensation when? you're equally like oh my god and equally like of course duh like right down the middle and that's exactly how I feel about the spirit guide thing so I'm just gonna say y'all try it for yourself you may not think you have your guardian angel slash goddess slash spirit guide slash <laughs> creepy ghost who follows you around whatever you want to call it but they're there they're there alone and that's a little bit overwhelming and a lot awesome and sit down with your spirit guide if you really do want to meet them do a little meditation it doesn't have to be a big old lotus position kumbaya moment it just needs to be you shutting the fuck up and turning off all your technology i'm talking to myself right now by the way not you sorry for being hard it's it's towards me it's shutting up turning things off and talking, sitting up if you need to, closing your eyes, crying if you need to, and saying it out loud. I'm ready. I believe you're there and I'm ready to see you. Show me a sign. And then you need to decide what your sign's going to be. And it may be something that just pops into your head. People, sometimes people use a coin. I know Deb uses a buffalo head nickel. Um, People, they say coins are a good one, flowers, butterflies, certain types of birds, feather. I love the feather because you can be on a walk randomly not thinking and you see a feather and you're like, oh, hey, how are you? It's amazing. Try it out, guys. I would love, love if you try it out and have some results and make a a video response or just leave some comments below you can't expect it to be overnight but they say within three days to three to five days and you can give them a time period but if you're asking for something crazy like all right I want to say uh, I mean please don't ask for a purple cat on your front porch tomorrow because I don't know if they can do that it's got to be in the realm of possibility but I have heard some pretty cool stories I know I've heard of some people being like, really? Okay. And they come up with something crazy and they see it. So even if it's just on TV, yours may not be a physical, tangible thing in front of you. Just keep your eyes open. I know people have asked for 
certain things in the middle of winter that don't grow in the middle of winter in their area, but they will still see it. They'll get a card in the mail. They'll see a commercial on TV. Somebody will walk by with a t-shirt, and if you're really paying attention and you see it, you're like, oh my god, that's it right there. So do it. Do it. Oh my gosh, do it, and then make a response. I would love it. And you know what? If you think I'm full of shit, that's cool. But I got, um, that's not shit. And this has happened when I've asked to see it. I see it. And this is why I love these. To keep them. Okay? Anyway. That's it. Hope you guys are doing great. Talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Peace.